Godzilla vs. Kong. Not to be confused with King Kong vs. Godzilla. This is the sequel to Godzilla 2014 and Kong Skull Island. Basically the whole reason the legendary monster verse was made. We open up somewhere on Skull Island. And we see Khan's morning routine. Gets up, scratches his butt, showers, meets up with some friends. This is Gia, the Khan Whisperer. But Khan takes a tree and tosses it into the sky, revealing that he's caged on an island. A monarch is studying him while still on Khan Island. This is Irene Andrews, and she's concerned that Khan might escape and fight off with Godzilla. This is Ben, and he's like, whatever, and Gia's deaf. Our opening credits is literally a bracket system, with one side leading from Godzilla up to Khan. Meanwhile, we meet Bernie Hayes, a dark web conspiracy podcaster living in, no surprise. And this is Walter Simmons, who runs Apex, a tech company who wants to save the Earth. Bernie secretly works for them, and by the power of annoying other people, he's gaining inside info, and something's going on and going to Hong Kong. Meanwhile, Godzilla's pissed, and he's heading straight to Apex. He's rampaging, oh no! What's that, brother I? Bernie sees this and escapes. As Godzilla's tearing up the city, and CNN puts a hit piece out on him. This gets seen by Eleven from the last film. She doesn't listen to the mainstream media and only listens to the dark web podcast. I don't like where this is going. Even Mark from Cam the Monsters returns, and he's back to hating Godzilla. But don't worry, he's only a cameo in this film, so who cares? Meanwhile, of Dr. Alexander Skarskar, he's being talked to by Apex, and they have the son of Sarasawa from the last film, Ren. And they're talking about how Hollow Earth is real in this film. They have all this new, cool, high-tech stuff, but it's kind of hard to get down there. So they're going to use a flying car to get down there and harvest whatever energy's down there. They're bringing to Alexander Skarskar because he's handsome, and he also proposes that muscle memory is a real thing, so they decide to go get a kaiju to throw down there first. Stopping by Skull Island, Irene's hesitant at first, but after some convincing, they strap Khan to a ship, much like in the original film, and they head out to the Antarctic to dump him into the underground. Also, Walter's daughter Maya is there. For reasons. It's a long ride, so Gia talks to Khan, and it turns out he can sign language back, and he's sad. Meanwhile, of Eleven, after watching a podcast, she meets up with Josh, and they take a storm tracker and head out. They try buying bleach at a Chinese store, so it'll be off the grid and not have a buying history. But because of a buying history, they find their way to Bernie's, and he's all paranoid. But he knows about Eleven's mom, so lets them in. Recapping the film, in case you forgot. And Bernie keeps some whiskey on him in a gun holster. Back with Khan, he's having some brekkie, but Godzilla smells it, and he's coming right for it. Godzilla flips them, and whoa, underwater, whoa, 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 there we go. Khan breaks free and jumps from boat to boat, using jets as lawn darts against Godzilla. Godzilla climbs up to the boat. They make an iconic pose. But Godzilla drags him underwater, and Kong can't swim too good. So after hitting him with some death charges, they decide to turn off the power to psych Godzilla out, and he just leaves. Meanwhile, the Burning Bros, oh no, the eye thing has been moved. So they make it into the purple neon elevator, and they find the secret lair of Apex. They get accidentally locked into a neon crate, and they're getting shipped Amazon Prime to Hong Kong. Meanwhile, of Kong, they airlifted him, a lot less silly looking than the original and dump him in front of the Antarctic portal to the underworld. Khan is a little hesitant, but they get Gia to say, hey, your family might be down there. Hop in or you freeze to death. So they follow him with the flying car, and after a bunch of flashy lights, they make it to Ice Age on the dinosaurs. They're in Earth. Khan immediately grabs one guy and beats another guy with him. They follow, and it's getting kind of interesting. So meanwhile, the Burn Squad make it to Hong Kong, and surprisingly, there's no guards around. And they find a thing, which Kylo Sarah is piloting, and it turns out to be Mecha Godzilla, directly inspired by the Bayverse Transformer designs. And it fights and takes out a skull crawler with its own atomic breath. But the battery life on it's terrible. And that's why they need the inner Earth batteries. And Eleven, looking a lot like Eleven from Stranger Things right now, theorizes that's why Godzilla's extra pissed off. 
Meanwhile, with a big G, he makes a U-turn in the sea and heads to Hong Kong. Meanwhile, of Khan, he comes across a mountain temple, which is completely empty. But he also finds an axe with a Godzilla scale in it. They decide to park and take a break for a second. Back at Hong Kong, there's surprisingly really zero guards in this building, as the group finds that Mechagodzilla is piloted by Kylo Ren Sarah via using the King Ghidorah skull from Kingdom of the Monsters. And it has telepathy. Kind of like how the 90s Mechagodzilla was built around Mecha Ghidorah. Godzilla finally makes it to Hong Kong, like in Godzilla vs. the Destroyer, and it turns out Khan's new axe has some juice in it. And now Godzilla juice is what Apex has been looking for. So they send a little crab thing, and it turns out it's not actually harvesting it, it's just literally like digging it up and taking a photo of it, sending it back to base, and they can recreate it there somehow. Everyone but Maya is starting to have second thoughts about all this. Godzilla senses what's going on and digs a hole from China to the inner earth with his atomic breath. Kong grabs Maya before she escapes and crushes that bitch. So now with their new express lane to Hong Kong, they head up. Eleven and crew are captured by the guards who remember to exist. So we can finally have some time with Godzilla vs. Kong again. Round two! It's still a nighttime fight scene, which Legendary Pictures loves for some reason. But due to all the neon of Hong Kong, we can actually tell what's going on. It's really fun, actually. Khan has his axe, which gives him an advantage, but Godzilla still has atomic breath, which he chases Khan with. And there are some interesting camera angles when the flying car goes by them. But we take a break with a combo breaker of atomic breath and axe. Back with Eleven and crew, Walter explains that humanity is the true alpha male of this society or whatever, and they're going to use Mecha Godzilla. Back with the monsters, Khan didn't hear no bell and jumps on Godzilla. Oh no, his axe ran out of juice. Even with him shoving it into Godzilla's mouth like the tree in the original. So Godzilla stomps him into the ground, yelling in his face that he's the king around these parts. Back with Apex, they insert the batteries into Mecha Godzilla, but this only revives Ghidorah. So he fries Kylo Ren Sarah and squashes Walter. Bursting out, it's daytime now. So that's why Godzilla is so cranky all of a sudden. So he starts to fight him, but oh no, Mecha Godzilla's badass, and he drops Godzilla. So Alexander Skarsgar decides to use the flying car as a defibrillator on Khan, reviving him. Gia tries to explain that Godzilla's not an enemy, and Khan's like, man, well at least there's still one lizard and kick the ass of. So he stops Mecha Godzilla from pulling King Khan on Godzilla's mouth, and the two tag team that Mecha Godzilla with Godzilla supercharging the axe, and he goes Tin Man on his mechanical ass. Yeah, now they're covered in oil. So after a one sit down breather from all of that, happy ending. Humans are alive and reunite with their family. Godzilla says, we cool for now, but I still hate you. And he rides off into the sunset as Khan moves downstairs. But he's still getting studied. This film's kind of campy and silly and it's perfect. It's really awesome seeing these two monsters actually in a film together again. Basically, every Godzilla fan wanted a reboot of the original film, and we finally got it. But no one really expected this to actually happen again. While paying tribute to the original, it updates stuff to actually fit in line with modern audiences. The fights are all amazing, the lighting's great. It feels like legendary pictures are actually learning from their mistakes the past films. This is basically the entire reason that legendary pictures made this series in the first place. And it's definitely worth it. This is the best of them so far. 9.5 out of 10. Even if there are some such things like conspiracy podcasts and inner earth theory being real in this film. It might not be for everyone, but it's literally called Godzilla vs. Khan. What else do you want? Make sure to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button if you're new, share with your friends, and comment your own opinions in the comments below.